When you're brand new as a real estate investor, what percentage deposit up front should uh, they expect to hear from qualified general contractors, say for their first deal or two? Well, I, my, my, I, I get this question asked often and my, my, what I suggest to people is try to minimize that dollar amount as least amount as possible. And in, uh, as far as if they're, that money is going towards the purchase of materials, I would even go to the extent of purchasing the materials and having that under my name some, somehow structured in that way. Legally, you want to do that because then you retain ownership of the materials instead of in the owner, uh, ownership of that general contractor trace person. But I try to minimize the amount of money put down. And I understand that uh, there, there's been a going trend, especially now because of this real estate market, how heated it is and, and uh, everybody's running, running, running that uh, more and more people are looking for deposits, especially these trades people and contractors. But I try to minimize that of dollar amount. In fact, not give any. Like it's, it, none of these guys, like when you walk into McDonald's, yes, you're going to give your $10 over to, 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 to purchase that hamburger and you step aside and wait for it to be made. But none of these guys are, are, are McDonald's. So this whole notion that me paying up front uh, for, for these contractor trades people to reserve them or, or for them to go to my job, is something that uh, I try to avoid as least as best, and I, I, I encourage people to avoid as best they can. They don't need to get uh, 50%. I've heard some outrageous sums of money, 50, 80% uh, upfront. And that's no way to do business because guess what? Um, you've lost control. Jay, you've lost control. When you've overpaid your contract or trace person, you've lost control because then they can jerk you around. They can go now, you know, they started your job and they got another job that they got to run off to. They're going to go run off to do that one. And they'll tell you they'll be there, but they'll be back at your place in a couple of days. It turns into being a couple of weeks. And who's paying for that? But you've already paid them. So you've got, they got you by, they got you in a headlock and you got no wiggle room. If you, if you got them, if you got them coming to you every week or two weeks with an invoice to pay them, trust me, I got control. They're going to show up on my job site. They're going to finish their work. And then they're going to they're going to go take advantage of somebody else's good graces. But they're not going to do that with me. So that's part of the seasoning and the experience that you and I have. That fortunately, you know, you can't buy that in a book. You can't, you know, download it in a YouTube video and watch it. These are types of things that I can tell you thousands of stories that I come across in situations where, you know, it's it just experience. So. Absolutely. Well, you know, when, uh, when you talk about maintaining control, one way that I learned the hard way years ago is I never write that final check to the general contractor, that final draw until my realtor, who's going to be selling that house, does a walkthrough and does their punch list. Then we get the final punch list and then we pay that final check. Mm -hmm.